Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded supercars in terms of top speed. We're quickly going to go over the slowest vehicles right now and as always the position counter is in the top left with the actual top speed the car achieved in the top right. This video only focuses on straight line performance so if you're interested in racing where braking, cornering and acceleration are all relevant check the link in the description for the lap time testing series and if you want to know more information about this testing including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. So this is the 2018 edition for this video and it contains all vehicles and is accurate up to the Doomsday Heist DLC. If there's any other changes or any new cars are added after that point, you'll be able to find their specific videos by clicking the link in the description that takes you to the playlist for this series where everything is organised in terms of class for every single car in the entire game. But the start of this video is very very similar to the 2017 version of this video with the notable exception of the Cyclone being in 34th place just ahead of the Voltic. The two electric cars have very very poor top speeds despite having good acceleration and that's something that I want to quickly touch on here is that this video is all about top speed. It doesn't involve acceleration, cornering, braking, anything like that. If you want to know how well these cars do in a racing situation, you need to be looking at the lap time testing series which I mentioned. This is only what these cars can do at their very, very top speed when they've been given a long run up and this is the difference between them. So this is why, you know, drag testing for example isn't a good indicator of how a car is in terms of top speed because it, it, drag tests at the airport don't, you know, give you the, the, the distance needed to get up to top speed. Drag tests are more about acceleration and there's so much variation and variety in potential performance of a car when it's accelerating that it is a very, very uh, inaccurate way to test cars. So drag tests are something that I don't do and I will never do because it's just not a very good way for uh, to, to you know not learn about cars. But this is specifically about top speed, which is why you're seeing the list in the order that it is. And that's why the electric vehicles like the Cyclone and the Voltic, despite having good acceleration, are way down at the back of the grid in terms of 34th and 35th places. Now at this point around the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd area, we're seeing some pretty you know, respectable vehicles like the Zentano, the T20, the Osiris. We've seen a lot of vehicles that are not too bad around a track in terms of lap time, as we saw from the lap time testing video, but they're only, you know, sub 20th in, in position for top speed. And that's the, the thing that also you need to understand about top speed is that top speed doesn't have much of a relevance for regular racing. Again, for that same reason that when you come to a corner, you're not having the amount of time required to get up to top speed and make use of it before you have to come to another corner and slow down and start turning again. So for example, the XA21 that we saw there in 19th place, it is actually below the Tyrus, but because, and the same with the RE7B, it's very similar to the Tyrus in 17th place. In fact, it gets exactly the same top speed of 123.5 miles per hour. The XA21 and the RE7B are much better around the corners, have better acceleration than the Tyrus, which is why they're better in terms of lap time, in terms of cornering, in terms of what they can do in a racing situation, yet they are all in exactly the same place in terms of top speed. And we see here with the GP1, that was way down the order in the lap time testing video, but it has a decent top speed and puts it up into 16th place for this. So that's a, a distinction that you need to make about these two things and you need to figure out which car is right for you based on what you're going to be doing more often than not. If you're going to be doing races or just requiring a car that's more often than not going to be going as fast as possible in a single straight line then this is the series for you but then you have to take into account that some of the best cars in the game in terms of top speed aren't all that good in terms of cornering as well and that's what the lap time testing video is for. So in 14th place here we've got the Rocket Voltic with 124.5 miles per hour. That's actually its average top speed over the course of a distance. That is what you'll be going. It actually boosts straight up to 140 miles per hour for an instantaneous amount and then it goes right back down to about 106 miles per hour um, and that's without using the boost at all. So when you average that out, you will be traveling over a longer distance, about 124 miles per hour in the Rocket Voltic. So it seems like it should be quick with the, the boost, but because you lose that speed so quickly, 
when you average it out over the course of a long straight, you're not really getting an awful lot from it, and there's certainly plenty of other cars like the Adder, which we saw there for 124.8 miles per hour, and the FMJ with 125 miles per hour that, that are quicker than it. So the Adder is probably the Adder was always the one that was the quickest previously. You know, when the game first came out, it's kind of like the entity was for the lap time testing. The Adder was always the quickest in terms of top speed, but since then we've had updates and new vehicles added to the game that just completely changed the game. Now, we had the Vision there in 11th place, just outside of the top 10, and just getting into the top 10 is the Autark, brand new vehicle to the game at 125.5 miles per hour. Actually does pretty well to get into the top 10, obviously the supercars class is very, very close. You know, when you think we're, we're only five miles per hour quicker than what we saw at 20th place and 21st place, so, Again, everything is quite close together for the supercars class, but this is where we start to see some much, much bigger differences. Starting with the Italian GTB in ninth place at 126.3 miles per hour, we start to see when we get to the top 10 that cars are taking on a different, a different idea of what they should be. You've got the old style of supercars like the T20 and the Zentano that we're always very, very good in terms of acceleration, in terms of cornering capabilities, but as we saw, their top speeds were only 120 miles per hour, which is, you know, way down in the order in this list. But these are the, this sort of new breed of cars, which is, we've seen in the more recent DLCs, like the Nero, the Italian GTB, the Autark, the, the Nero Custom, and the Italian GTB Custom, things like that. They not only can corner pretty well but they also have very high top speeds also you know in, in addition to that the Wagner here in seventh place kind of underlines it's how good it is in an all-round situation and how good it is of a buy in general with it being so good in terms of lap time and also having a top speed to back it up of 126.8 miles per hour which is very close and when you get to these uh, small differences in top speed it's something that you're not really going to notice all that much there's so many different variables that can be taken into account when it comes to you know even just racing on a, a long road like this against your friend just the slight little movement of the left stick and turning will slow you down all that kind of stuff so the, the differences here of a few miles few point of a miles per hour isn't really all that great so the Wagner again there in seventh place really underlying how good it actually is overall. The, the Italian GTB Custom and the Nero Custom are slightly quicker than their regular counterparts, although in the Italian GTB's version, the Italian GTB Custom is slightly slower around a lap, but it is slightly quicker in terms of top speed. And then kind of the best of the, 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 the sort of competitive supercars is the x80 proto in fourth place here just missing out on the top three with 127.5 mile per hour top speed this is why it's very good for stunt racers because it can corner very well same with the nero custom that we just saw in fifth place they've both got very high top speeds that are close to each other they can both corner very well they're both all-wheel drive which is what the which is what works very well in terms of stunt racers in the tubes and things like that now we come on to the top three, and for third place and second place, we've seen quite a bit of a change over the course of the last few years because our second place vehicle has had its uh, top speed upped and then uh, you know nerfed again and then buffed again. But ultimately, the Banshee 900R is in third place with 131 mile per hour, with the 811 in second place with a top speed of 132.5 miles per hour. Now, both of these vehicles have always been very close. The 811 gets its top, its top speed more from a bug and it will actually be on quicker at higher frame rates on PC but this is the quickest vehicle you can use in regular supercar races in terms of top speed which leaves of course the Vigilante which has a top speed of a scarcely believable 147 miles per hour again the same way that I mentioned for the Rocket Voltic that is the average speed that you'll be going over the course of a long distance with the Vigilante, it is similar to the Rocket Voltic, it boosts up to about 150 miles per hour, but it loses its speed much slower than what the Rocket Voltic does. The Rocket Voltic almost instantly goes back to 106 miles per hour. The Vigilante takes a bit more time to lose that speed that it gets from the Rocket Boost, which is why its average speed is so high. And as we can see in the comparison between the Vigilante and the 811, 
that is a big difference in terms of top speed the vigilante is where that's where it gets all of its lap time from as well and the 811 is still the best one that you can use for a, a long highway race because you can't use the vigilante in regular supercar races but you do have to take into account that the 811 and the banshee 900 are our second and third placed vehicles for top speed that they aren't very good in terms of cornering ability and that's why the x80 proto and the nero custom were the best all-rounders now we've got the wagner which is there or thereabouts and is incredible in the corners so the the, the 811 and the banshee 900 r are only good in very specific circumstances they're very close to each other in terms of top speed as we saw and they're really they're, they're you know a good four or five miles per hour quicker than you know the x80 proto in fourth place but when it comes to regular supercar races you do have to take into account what kind of track you're going to be on and most of the time even if there's only a small number of corners the 811 and the banshee 900 r just won't be able to uh, give you the performance that you need for a track that is anything other than just a really long straight and that's what we saw from the lap time testing video those two cars are quite far down the order for lap time but obviously they're closer to the top for top speed but ultimately again the vigilante is the number one it's just crazy really it should be in its own class really you know it kind of uh, it's not really a supercar in comparison to the others but in you know i suppose that you can't use the vigilante in regular supercar races anyway but it is the fastest car in the game in terms of top speed so that's pretty much it. Remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, subscribe for more and consider supporting on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.